if you, if you can't hear us, because I know there's enough people. Um, so let us know if we need to talk louder. I noticed when I was watching the videos of our meetings that it was hard to hear us on the video. So again, Matt, just let us know if you can just keep up. Waving my hand or something. Sounds good. Okay, I'd like to call to order our meeting tonight. And it is, uh, there we go, July 11th, Spring Rural Board of Education meeting. And roll call, please. Coles, here. Tony. Yes. Miller. Here. Bergano. Here. Cool. Here. Okay, would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Is there 
anybody here representing the County Borough Classified employee? Employees? Okay, we will move on. Agenda 2.3, public participation prearranged. We have first, we have uh, Mrs. Stephanie Bendeman. Stephanie Bendeman, 35 Fry Court. There can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way which it treats its children. Nelson Mandela said that. He's dying now, but I remember when Nelson Mandela, when I was in college and everybody sang the song Free Nelson Mandela. A great man. And I just want to open with that. Why does it seem like the board is more focused on settling a contract with Huffmasters in order to staff a, to staff a strike than it is on settling a contract with our teachers? This isn't acceptable in my community. Why is the board intent on spending our hard-earned tax money to bring in an outside company to fill a low number of teaching positions instead of committing our hard-earned tax money to our great teachers who are dedicated and experienced professionals. Not acceptable for my community. Why would the board be satisfied with entering into a contract that only provides the district with about 58% staffing allowing HuffMaster to bring in a few people to replace our high-quality teaching staff. It's not gonna provide my children with the caliber of education that I've come to expect in Springboro. Also, with the number of administrators who've left the district over the summer, there's not even gonna be a familiar adult face when my boys go into five grade. <coughs> if the board is successful in forcing this strike. Still not acceptable in my community. Why does the proposed contract from HuffMaster outline when the strike will become profitable to the board? Doesn't the board realize that no one profits in a strike, except perhaps the board, who appears only to be focusing on advancing your own political agenda? This isn't going to happen in my community. If you're interested in reading about the Huffmaster contract, you can find it on a lot of Facebook pages, Active Springboro, Springboro Sure, or two of them. Mr. Bud had it attached to his story that he wrote the other day. I think it's good reading. You need to see what's going to happen when this happens. I want you guys to look deep into yourself, into that deep part that says, I need to do what's right for my kids and my community. It's time for this board to do what's elected to do, and you need to represent us, this community. We demand that you settle the contract with the teachers now and avoid a strike in Springboro. Thank you. directly contradicts your self-aggrandizing commentary related to fiscal responsibility. 
And I'm not here to discuss your ineptitude for managing the district's finances, as you have evidence that all on your own. The Huffmaster website states, and I quote, when you need a low-skill, lower-cost solution, Huffmaster can supply qualified local replacement workers. That you believe it is more appropriate to turn to this company than to ensure your teachers are treated fairly should offend the senses of every single person in this community. Communicating with Hawkmaster indicates your tacit approval of the notion that the acquisition of quality pedagogical skills is not necessary to be an effective teacher. And it represents your complete disrespect for the profession. If you continue to ignore the needs of teachers and students by facilitating this strike, the ne negative outcomes will no doubt be far and long lasting. Given the animosity that you have generated and advocated within this community, your lack of respect towards teachers and students, and the patronizing way you address the community at large, I imagine that if the teachers reach a point at which they feel their only option is to strike, a resolution will not come quickly. This, we know, will harm students most. A strike means that the environmental context of all the schools at every level, every level changes for the worse. Rather than focusing on learning, social development, as well as college and career preparation, the schools instead will work to deference for learning, will promote anxiety and anger among students and parents, will minimize critical thinking, will impede cognitive and emotional engagement, and will hinder students' future opportunities. High school students who expect to take AP courses, the OGT and college entrance exam, will be inherently disadvantaged given their limited access to quality learning experiences until the strike ends. Consequently, teachers' value added scores will be negatively impacted, but not by their own accord, by yours. Rather than reflecting Spring Hour teachers' effectiveness, those accountability scores will represent the atrocious influence of Hawkmaster. Meanwhile, middle school students who've experienced some of the most complicated developmental changes of their lives will not have the support and guidance that most, they most definitely need from their teachers who actually are invested in their futures. Similarly, young ch children's thirst for knowledge and inquisitive nature will be left to the devices of those who are not able to effectively develop the malleable minds of the young people. While I have absolutely nothing negative to say about any of the new administrators in the district, the conditions under which they were hired no doubt leaves parents and students with feelings of distrust and apprehension. How do you expect a positive, effective, and meaningful acad academic environment to be created under these circumstances? Furthermore, when the strike ends, teachers will step back into their classrooms in which very little learning likely took place during the strike. They will, to be honest, have to clean up your one big hot mess before they are able to focus on the difficult yet rewarding job of educating, guiding, and supporting their students. Any lack of recognition of the multitude of consequences that will arise if you push teachers to a strike only reflects pure negligence on your part. I urge. Now I demand that you conduct yourselves with professionalism and do your due diligence to ensure that you work with the union to come to a successful resolution to the contract negotiations. Anything less will absolutely only lead to grossly detrimental effects for all the students in the entire district. turnout tonight and I respect everyone's passion for what they believe in because freedom of speech is what we all want to um, hold in high regard in this country as well as here in Springboro. I'm here on a different nature. I'm here to, to uh, question about the letter that was written to the board regarding the Constitution classes that were canceled here recently. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 415 Gilkin Drive. The, the person in question that wrote the letter really had some interesting points and I'd like to make it as quick as possible. Uh, first of all, she cites the Southern Poverty Law Center as a reliable source. Really? That's like me citing Bill O'Reilly, Wikipedia, or Dayton Daily Excuse for a reliable source to go by. And yet she did no homework on the National Center for Constitutional Studies. I attended this course about two years ago in Cincinnati, saw nothing to the uh, points that she brought about this other course. Jim Regano made it very clear more than once and I agree with her, that the community should wait and attend these classes to evaluate the content before you attack it, 
Try it, you might actually like it. The League of the South that she pointed out is identified by the SPLC as a neo-confederate group that advocates a, for a second southern secession and society dominated by European Americans. The League believes the godly nation it wants to form should run by Anglo-Celtic Reed White. The League that established a Christian theocratic state employed to dominate blacks and other minorities. The League denounces the federal government in northern and coastal states as part of an empire, materialistic and anti-religious society. Goldwater made the same comment in the early 60s. He said uh, he wanted to salt that part of the country that flowed out to sea. And he was half Jewish. So you can't say he's totally a, a white supremacist or anything like that. Furthermore, she brought out some interesting individuals of this uh, thing here. Okay, this one includes members Jack Kershaw made the following statement, for example, somebody needs to say a good word for slavery. Kershaw told a report in 1998, we're in a world of Negroes better off today than in America. And that is actually a correct factual statement because nowhere in any other black nation do blacks have a better opportunity for education, opportunity for employment, and not worry about genocide in their countries by rival tribes. And so, I have you know many black people have been very successful and they're very prolific people in this country. <laughs> hey, hey, I can listen to you all, you all can listen to me. Please and thank you. Okay, the best part of this is she goes on a tirade about this individual. Talking about how he uh, stood for the national anthem and stood for and uh, stood up and they played Dixie. And she says, unless I miss some act of Congress and another proclamation from our government, our national anthem is a star spangled banner. It's like, really, when did you not prove for your own work, madam? I mean, she does not prove for her own work. She keeps on a, a character sass state instead of putting out facts. She ties it that uh, this is a blatant disregard for your constituency. This is the imposition of the theological dreams of a, few, of a few versus those who are supposed to serve. This is inviting to our community organizations, teachings of this organization, with ties to a fanatical group whose very ideology goes against what we're trying to teach our children, tolerance and acceptance. Ah, read. This is multiculturalism and political correctness, i.e. critical theory. So do your homework on critical theory. I'm all about supporting critical thinking because it makes kids think for themselves so they can ask questions about things of this nature. And lastly, I just wanted to say that uh, this lady's last surname is McClellan. Now, many of the South are English, Scottish, Irish, and Dutch in descent. You can look at by their last names. And I also need to point out that this woman is obviously married to a Scotsman and her surname is McClellan, just like George McClellan, the Union Army who fought to uh, end slavery in this country, as well as Major Hezekiah McClellan, whose Air Force base is named after him. So she said she demanded that these classes be, be, be uh, taken away and everything else. And we pay taxes for this facility just like everybody else, and we should go out and use it for other opportunities that arise. So I have no problem with that. So I do have one question. Mr. Thomas, I need I'm you to finishing right up. Up. All I gotta say is, you see this flag? Does it offend you? Yes. 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 You know why? This is about heritage, not hate. Move down there, then. I prefer to be in Ohio where I was born and raised, thank you very much. And my paternal grand uncle, great grand grand uncle, was actually a great to free a slave. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, please. I will, I will direct the speaker. The speaker, we need to draw too close, please. He fought to free the slaves. So, I mean, you know, my point is, just like this issue, so I, would not, I would not attack your issue without reading into it first. So please look into this issue for yourself we did. before you attack it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Jason Lewis. <laughs> Jason Lewis going I mean, that's sad. I <laughs> compelled to come here for the first time and speak in front of this board because this board has lost all credibility in making decisions that are in the best interests of our students. The past decisions have led to lawsuits, local and national condemnation, and reputation is not going to attract talent in this district. It's apparent by your actions and decisions that you're operating and basing decisions on your political ideology, aspirations, agendas, and there isn't any place for it here in Springboro. I was dumbfounded by your most recent decision on the Constitution class. 
the constitutional issue aside, the biggest concern was who you decided to invite into our schools to teach our students. How could you have not known who these classes were affiliated with? It took me five minutes and a simple Google search to discover the following. Michael Perusha, board member now of Leaving the South. Their mission, Southern Succession, Advancement of the Anglo Celtic People. They've been labeled a help uh, hate group, and he's appeared on the white supremacy show called The Political Cesspool. David Barton, his recent book was voted the least credible history book by professional historians, and his published, publisher pulled support and stopped printing. John Eidsma, he was uninvited from a Tea Party rally due to his comments and affiliations with white power groups, and he's a frequent contributor to the John Burke Society and Council for Conservative Citizens. He's also stated Jefferson Davis knew the Constitution better than Abraham Lincoln. I'm really, really curious to know which one of you decided on these classes and who decided which people are appropriate for our kids to learn from. The only two options to that question is you explicitly knew and moved forward, or you decided on these classes with absolutely no due diligence, which for a potential potential addition to a curriculum is incompetence. I'm extremely disappointed in your decision-making ability and the choices that you've made on who provides educational value to our students. These people that you've chosen to teach our kids do not. Their beliefs are detrimental to what Springboro stands for. Thank you. set aside about 20 minutes um, and about three minutes each whoever wants to speak for public participation and that can be on any agenda item so anybody would like to speak on an agenda item okay we can move on to agenda item um, 3.1 okay yeah, if you're a, a resident and we need your address. So your name and address. You don't, you don't live here now or you do live here now? I got you. Uh, my name is Ramona Anderson. I live at 8520 Eagle Ridge Drive in Springboro. I have been a Springboro resident since 1982. I have raised two children that are spring break graduates, 1994 and 1999. I now have a granddaughter in this system. I have spent 33 years in education, 27 as a teacher, five as an administrator, and I've lived with a school board member <laughs> in spring break. So what I would say to you is, first of all, thank you for your time. I know you don't do this for the money or the appreciation. I also feel like I have a real, a really deep understanding of the complexity of the issues that you face. Uh, Mrs. Cole, thank you for having an email exchange today with my daughter, um, Rebecca Jupri. I have printed out the emails, and I have some questions about those. Uh, just you know, if board members are speaking in, because we, we don't... I understand that. Dialogue. You don't have to address okay. my questions. Okay. You can pretend they're rhetorical. <laughs> okay. I'm first, with my daughter's permission, going to read her letter to you. Um, her letter says, Dear board members, and I believe this was forwarded to all the board members and Mr. Petrie. I'm a 1994 graduate of Springboro High School and currently have a daughter entering second grade at Five Points Elementary. My son will begin kindergarten. I implore you to please put political agendas aside and do what is best for our children in our community. Please settle a contract with our teachers. I understand that you believe you have the community behind you. Let me be clear that you do not have an entire community who believes in your agenda. You have a large number of parents that are questioning and losing faith in the community and the school district in which they live. My seven-year-old daughter, my granddaughter, loves school. She is eager to learn and has done nothing but thrive in school thus far. 
please do not undo that with the inevitable chaos and instability that will ensue, not only in our schools, but in our community if we do not settle a contract with our teachers. It has been well established that very large sums of money will be spent to keep our schools open if the teachers strike. Money is going to be spent regardless of your decision. So please use that money to keep our teachers in the classrooms where they belong. Um, at the end of your email exchange, you also got an email from my son-in-law. My son-in-law is a Boston native that we are very grateful chose to move to Springboro because he saw value in the quality of life here and in raising a family here. He is an economist, and when you start talking about numbers, you are talking his language. He also wrote to you this afternoon. By way of introduction, my name is Doug Dupree. I'm Rebecca's husband and a fellow concerned citizen. I want to take the opportunity to try and better understand the numbers that you have discussed here. You referred my daughter to the ODE website, one I'm painfully familiar with, let me get a curriculum address. I'm fairly new to this discussion and I want to make sure I have my facts straight. I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I'll paraphrase for you. He says, our concern is not whether teacher salaries increase slightly faster than median family income and whether that violates some concept of fairness. Rather, our concern is whether we are making the correct decisions to attract and retain the talented faculty that will most benefit our children, the most precious commodity this community has. I looked at the information on the website and in fact, of eight school districts in Warren County, Springboro has the highest median household income. But I'm sorry to say that Springboro ranks number eight out of eight when you compare the teacher salary to the average median home income. Wow. We are the only ones with a percentage ratio of less than one. Franklin Schools has a percentage ratio of teacher salary to average home median income of 1.9. These are people with far less money, but far greater value for the education of their children. Can you uh, draw to a close? Yes, I can. Thank you. I will say that if we follow that reasoning to a logical conclusion, then God help those who teach in impoverished areas. And let's all move to Beverly Hills and teach there. <laughs> please, 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 I implore you, please settle with your teachers. They work harder. There's not one of them that's ever spent a day overpaid. I've walked in their shoes. I've sat in their seats. I've been close to your seat. I swore I would never do this. <laughs> I'm a grandmother. And I thought it was time to leave this to someone else, but congratulations, you have renewed my interest. <laughs> I did blah, 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 and then there was this, this great teacher that helped turn, turn me around. I wasn't a super, super bad kid. I was the type of kid that would put a kiss tape in the film strip producer, and I was the type of kid that didn't uh, focus on his homework. And then there was one sixth grade how did, how did he get me interested? Well, he had, ex he had awesome activities, he did things uh, uh, differently, and he challenged me. He put the great rankings. And I wanted to be number one. I went back in a, several years ago to a, and um, to, to to a Christmas party, and I was like, "How did you how'd you get me out of there?" I was like, "I, I really went to a good school, and I've owned, I've owned a couple businesses." And he said, 
It was experience. It was experience. I didn't do it when I was a new teacher. I did it after years of experience. So value experienced teachers is what I feel. And I think that's what everybody in this community should, should value. And so I think about what things like when we are the richest zip code in um, the Dayton area. And I think about property taxes. Now granted, nobody likes property taxes. Honestly, it's a really dumb one. It's incredibly dumb how, how they do it to fund the schools. That uh, cheap, uh, poor, poorer areas have less taxes and it has to be made up by the state and, you know, and, and, and the whole thing. But it's our way. And so what I'm here to say is that I want to be taxed enough for quality teachers. I don't want to lose the teachers. I know when I pay for something, I'm going to be, be, be paying for the quality of it. I want to pay more. I want to have enough taxes. I want to have a renewal levy. I want a new money levy. I want to pay these taxes for these teachers. And I gotta tell you, it is, there's an amazing opportunity. One person on this board has the influence that could change these things. We are such a divided community. We're almost even on the, on, on the new, new money levy. All that would have to happen is Dr. Coles going to the Tea Party and saying, I want this. I want this. We need these teachers. Never before can I think about one person that has so much power just to do it. And I'm imploring you, do it. And lastly, because this is the nerd meet, it's a public service announcement. It's set 7-Eleven. I'm wearing, wearing my slur Slurpee shirt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I'm not wearing my, my red shirt. But um, I, re I, I, really, I really think that this is, this is a, our community. And we, we need these teachers. We need good, experienced teachers. <laughs> speakers go but these are not things that are on the agenda so this part of public participation is supposed to be for things that are on the agenda and if you read the public uh, participation it's on our website on policy 165 it does indicate that if you want to speak on anything that's not on the agenda you simply prearrange and it does describe how to do that and I am going to get definitely get flack for, for letting people break the policy and so I don't want to let that keep going uh, we need to go ahead and go on with that. You can speak on something that's on the agenda. Uh, I'm sorry. Your replacement teacher? No. No, that's not on the agenda. No, it's not. You take if we had, you know, something about negotiations, if we had something about, um, you know, we're voting on the contract, this At, is the best which may be one of these times, but today I do have to stick to the policy because I've made other people do it. I've made other people sit down, one of us in the audience, if their conversation was not on, a, on an agenda item at this part in the, in the board meeting. How about 9.1? What item do you want to speak about? I'm not sure what, I don't have an agenda in front of me. It's pretty, it's pretty short. No, I, I've made, no really, I I'm let a couple people guys speak, earlier today. but I need to get on with the agenda items. I gotta follow policy because I've made other people sit down and they were doing it. It is, it is the board's meeting. It's time to follow, we're gonna follow the policy, guys. I think I've been, uh, I think I've been great about uh, letting people speak and it's, but we do have to end it at some point because again, it's not fair that I make other people sit down when they're not following policy. And then now tonight I don't know why it's so we need to move on. If somebody has something just uh, sort of fair on the resignations. Five point one five resignations of personnel, five point one. No. Five point one. My name, my name is Leslie Marsh. I live at 160 Foliage Lane here in Springboro. Both of my kids are in Springboro. My oldest one graduated in 1990. No, sorry. I don't know either. 2009. I'm way back there. Okay, so I sent an email earlier and uh, just wanted to be sure that this got heard somehow. 
I am hoping to, not, to hear tonight that the school board has finally decided to put the education of this district's children above the, their political agendas. I'm hoping to hear that this board has decided Mrs. Marsh, I think not I made to ponder our clear. limited resources on replacement teachers uh, with our excellent current staff, and that they have decided to okay. work toward a fair and reasonable compromise with our current teachers. I think I've staff. made myself clear. So thank you very much. You're going to have to leave. I'm sorry, oh. Mr. Don. <laughs> Don Wilson would like you to leave, or he will ask you will escort you out. Hi, Don. Thanks, Don, guys. address agenda 8.1. Um, my name is Heather Potts. I live at 225 Cedar Hill Lane. Um, my biggest comment is, is that um, Mrs. Coles, when we talked earlier today, you said something about a silent majority. Um, however, the people that are here representing you are a very vocal minority. So I'd like you to listen to us. Uh, we will, absolutely. When you come and you want to speak on an agenda item, then that's fine. If you want to speak about something that's not on the agenda, all you have to do is prearrange, like people did tonight. This is our agenda. So you're welcome to do that. That's following policy. We're going to move on to the treasurer's report. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to close item number 5.1, if I may. The approval of personnel items. If, if it sticks to that. My, my name is Jenny Nijak. I live at 99 Loans Court. It's my understanding there have been 11 resignations of certified personnel, and I just wanted to make that clear. Um, I have grave concerns that we're losing our personnel, administrative as well as teachers in this community, and I think by taking care of the contract that they would take care of the problem. Thank you. Back. Yes. Last month we advanced the um, uh, 
the federal grants money because they were in the negative that the federal funds, the state had not given us our money yet. So now we're just advancing the money back to the general fund. So it was the, we took it, one, we just moved it one year, month, and we were giving it back this month. We need a motion to approve? Second. Uh, Mrs. Cole, any discussion? Roll call. Petroni? Yes. Cole? Yes. Coles? Yes. Miller? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Okay, agenda item 4.1, policy revision, second reading. Yes, and this is the approval of policy revisions the 2000 preschool program. I know you went over these, but I guess if you have any questions for Mr. Pagano, would be our first to ask. When these were addressed, I'll be there to meet with Mrs. Benson and Mrs. Strickler. These were all recommended changes to policies by our policy company. Legal Yes, um, except for 6152, which is the changes to uh, student fees, fines, and charges. And uh, Mrs. Jarvis had brought forward a number of uh, recommendations to help us collect fees in the future. So uh, those were not from the policy advisor. And last month, someone asked how much was still outstanding school fees, and that's $123,000. Okay. That this year from all the years. All year. I need a motion to approve agenda item 4.2. Sorry, 4.1, the second reading policies. That's Mr. Petroni. I need a uh, second? Second. Cole. Any further discussion? Roll call. Petroni? Cole? Yes. Falls? Yes. Miller? Yes. Okay, 4.2, approval of the revision to the SCEA contract. Yes, that was uh, decided today, overwhelmingly, 95% approval. We went over it. We have any questions on the answer to those this time, but it's not our signature approval for that contract. You have a motion to approve 4.2, revision to the SCEA contract. Oh. Yeah. 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 I need a second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Just when you say 95%, what does that mean? That means of the classified employees, we had all the seven. It means 113 said yes. Even better. Okay. <laughs> seven said no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if we could have voted the other way and, and not hurt ourselves, we would have voted more in the majority of no. Because you're splitting, you're splitting the classified and the certified. Well, in essence, uh, the, and, and I would like to ask that. Nothing's been ratified with the SCD contract. We're working diligently trying to get someone done, so I take offense to I'm trying to split this teaching staff. I do appreciate that this is fair to the classified staff, and it's the most they've gotten in eight years, so I'm very proud of that. Um, in terms of what this is, it is a uh, four-year contract that has no outsourcing involved in four years. Uh, they will receive a thousand dollars plus they will receive their steps. Um, and then I can, for three years, um, the insurance does go to age one, which uh, is one of those things that we uh, I, I'm proud of them for addressing that. That was very difficult for them to address that. That is an increase to them of anywhere from 57 to 70 dollars a month, depending on what plan they're on. But at the end of the day, um, I'm extremely proud of the classified staff. We work hard to make this happen. I don't think Mr. Stripper is also there. Uh, the team on the SEA classified staff works well, and today they were able to successfully ratify that contract. Did you say that there was the $1,000 thing? Correct, yes. And also, there is a mutual clause in this contract in order to treat fairness amongst both of our associations. If the teacher's contract, if and when it is set, uh, there is something that perhaps is more lucrative than this contract, our classified association will get that benefit. Okay, any further discussion? Okay. Roll call. Petroni? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Foles? Yes. Miller? Yes. Cole? Yes. 
Okay, agenda item 5.1, approval of personnel items. Good evening, Vincent, Director of Human Resources. Um, item one, we are looking at um, the approval to accept certified resignations, items one through 14. We are looking for approval to employ personnel, items 15 through 32. Okay, I need a motion to approve, 5.1. So I need a second. Second. Okay, this is calling any discussion. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Cole? Yes. Coles? Yes. Warren? Yes. Morgana? Yes. Agenda item 5.2. This is to employ administrative personnel. This is for gifted, talented service coordinator of January or August 1st, 2013, to about a 205 year, five day contract, two years. Deborah Glenn. I need a motion to approve. Oh, I need a second. Mr. Miller. Any discussion? Roll call. Tony? Yes. Miller? Yes. Coles? Yes. Bernardo? Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay, 5.4, approval to employ contract services for preschool programs. Actually, I'd ask that 5.3 and 5.4 go together. They are both preschool. One is for our occupational therapist. Um, that is an hourly rate. We also have our physical therapist. And when you approve these, we will be fully staffed for our new preschool program. Great. Okay. I, I agree. 5.3 and 5.4 combined. Unless there's an objection. Any discussion? Roll call. Morano? Yes. Tony? Uh, yes. Coles? Yes. Miller? Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay, agenda item 6.1. Thank you, Mrs. Vincent. 6.1 is board member comments. And uh, Mrs. Cole, would you like to start? Uh, just real quick, thank you for coming out this evening and showing your passion and support for our children and the community. Um, I think we can walk away this evening feeling good about some things. We're not necessarily where we need to be right now. Um, I'm happy to see that the preschool is fully staffed. I feel a little better that the preschool is fully staffed. I'm not, I'm happy that the buses, bus drivers will reach their agreement. Um, I understand that negotiations is a dance. I don't like to dance, um, but this is where we're at. Thank you showing your support for the teachers. Thank you. Mr. Miller? I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Um, everybody for coming. Um, I'd like to, to tell a little story, something that, um, something that uh, came up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, my daughter is in uh, or registered for AP history class and, and she walked up to me and she said, you know, I'm, I'm really very, very disturbed about something, mom. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm having trouble sleeping. I'm reading this book and it's really bothering me. And so I said, well, what is it? And she showed me the book, and there's two books assigned for the summer reading before AP starts. And um, I started reading some parts of it, 
and I became disturbed at the graphic depiction of you know slaughtering people and and really kind of horrific acts being described. Uh, the history that was portrayed here was a kind of an anti-military, anti-American history, and I thought, wow, I, I'm disturbed. So I did go ahead and look up the author, and when, when you talk about you know fully vetting and looking into what the children are being taught and being concerned about that. I, I think that's important. I think those are great points. And I think we need to talk about that more. Because it turns out, when I looked up the author, this is Howard Zinn. And we talk about you know, a, an author being credible. And uh, you know, when I started asking lots of people out there, historians, well, what do you think about this author? I got nothing but very, very negative. Uh, about the author, and so I would invite people to go look this up. I have indicated that I will I will not require my daughter to read this kind of a book that's that's anti everything that that we believe in. So I just want to say this to you. I believe that as I'm talking now. I want people. Mr. Wilson, would you like to help him out as well? I I need everybody their turn. Now I've got my turn. citizens of Springboro, we have difficulties in our school system that we face today. Kids are adrift. Many students don't know what they believe or even why they believe when it comes to true critical thought. While some of that is expected as they develop, the intent of my time here on the school board has been to get more parents and citizens motivated. I'll wait till you're all done. Okay. But this is important to talk to parents who are interested in helping children educate. Hope you're not. Parents, I believe. I want me to wait till you're all done. That's good. While you will support most, most of what your children are taught, you may not be aware of a lot of it. We have over the last two years gotten letters from parents and some standing at the podium telling us that they object to what their children are being taught. We have, um, su I'm suggesting that the more of you that know the curriculum better, the more you might be able to become involved in that. Um, I've been very saddened that, that teaching both sides to children has sparked so much criticism. It seems a no-brainer to me. Required reading from an author well known to be anti-American, anti-capitalism, anti-military, and anti-faith only causes children to be confused on what to believe about their parents, their church, and their nation. They are spending their summer, for example, reading about how all of these are a hoax and untrustworthy. Their country, their parents, their church. I would even be confused if I were a student reading this book. I am worried because due to recent events, I am asking myself the question, what is it that we're really teaching our children? It is only by accident that my child came to me and told me about this kind of politi political propaganda that she was forced to read over the summer. I am worried because 50 to 60 years, for 60, 50 to 60 years, the main disciplinary action of students was being sent to the principal's office for chewing gum or spitting, spitting uh, spit balls. Today, in our present culture, we have to be concerned about children bringing weapons to schools and the possibility of school shootings. Children are adrift. When even the founding documents have been sterilized of their intent and references to faith, I have to suggest that we leave the children to be adrift. While the state law was meant to preserve this content, we are being forced to abandon it. Dr. Yuri Tubim, a research engineer from Massachusetts, a former Soviet citizen, reminds us that Americans have shrugged off most of their responsibility by letting Washington bureaucrats do it. But in doing so, we set ourselves up for a system that is less interested in getting the job done than in perpetuating <coughs> itself. That is what we have done to education. We have let someone else drive this ship. This is a different day, and we need your input. 
I hope that very soon I hear from citizens and groups, and I hope that we get a chance to have citizen groups and parent groups that help us determine what these Springboro students should be reading, both required and elected offerings. Our district should reflect community philosophy. Help us get that done for these most precious children. Don't sit on the sidelines, get involved, and help stabilize the foundations for these children. Don't believe me, just read what your children are reading, look over the curriculum that is sent home and that they're reading, see if that fits your family philosophy, and over the next few months, I would really like to get some citizen groups, some parent groups together, and maybe we can start reviewing some of the literature. Again, the literature that's required and the literature that's offered through our libraries. And make sure that what is there matches the philosophy of the district. And that's what we're trying to do. That's why we open things up to first reading so that we get that community input. So we appreciate it. We're taking it back to policy. We're using the, the contents of what we got from a variety of sources and resources from across the country, which was very helpful to what we wanted to do here in Springboro. But I need to hear more from the parents. If you're content with it, then that's fine. Then you come in and, and read the books or read the content and see what you think. But uh, in my family, I think we have we have a philosophy, and I don't think being anti-military is a part of part of what we should be teaching. Thank you. We have uh, seven point one public announcements. Are there any public announcements? Oh, sure, I can do that. It'll be on my website. Okay, thank you. Yep, you bet. Um, any public announcements? about future considerations? Not hearing any? Okay, executive session, RC 121.22. I need a motion to move into executive session. And I'll read why. To consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official. Preparing for conducting, reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment. Need a motion to approve going into executive session. Mr. Petroni, any second? Second. Mr. Regano, any discussion? Roll call. Petroni? Yes. Regano? Yes. Cole? Yes. Miller? Yes. Cool. Yes. We're going to take a five minute break and then we're going to meet in the library for executive session only and there will be no action when we come out. Thank you.